Almighty God, creator and sustainer of all life, we ask that your blessing may descend on us as we gather here today. We thank you for this opportunity to once more in freedom assemble in honor to the veterans of our nation's armed forces, especially as we honor our, our Vietnam War veterans, those who are resting in peace and awaiting the resurrection. May we never forget them. May we never forget those who made the supreme sacrifice so as to secure for our nation the blessings of life, liberty, and justice for all. May our observance be a timely reminder that our freedom was purchased at a high cost and should not be taken for granted. Bless the families here and friends of those we honor today. And bless all veterans, especially Vietnam War veterans, who have come with memories, stories, and tears to enrich this day. Lord of peace, grant us grace and peace. Grant our fallen the peace and welcome them into your kingdom of heaven. We ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Michelle Roman will now sing our national anthem. And while she does, please remain standing and render our flag proper salute. Michelle.
signifies the blood they may have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. This rose also reminds us of the family and friends of our missing comrades who keep the faith while awaiting their return. The red ribbon on the vase represents the red ribbons worn on the lapels of thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper account of our comrades who are not among us. A slice of lemon on a plate reminds us of their bitter faith. The salt sprinkled on a plate reminds us of the countless fallen tears of families as they wait. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us tonight. The chair is empty. They are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope which lives in our hearts to illuminate their way home, away from their captors, to the open arms of the grateful nation. The American flag reminds us that many of them may never return. They have made the supreme sacrifice to assure our freedom. Let us pray to the supreme commander that all of our comrades will soon be back within our ranks. Let us remember and never forget their service. May God watch over them, protect them, and their families. I want to start by welcoming you here tonight for our 6th Annual Vietnam Veterans Remembrance Ceremony. It is my privilege to be your host for this evening's program. Each time we conduct this service, I hope that it brings a little closure for many of our veterans who are still suffering the pain and horrors of their wartime experiences. Our program tonight is to thank and honor veterans of the Vietnam War, including personnel who were held as prisoners of war or listed as missing in action those who have served in country, and the many others that have served in support bases throughout the world. For their service and sacrifice on behalf of the United States, and to thank the families of these veterans who waited at home for their safe return. The Vietnam War is without doubt one of the most significant events in the history of the United States. It remains the longest conflict ever fought by the U.S. Armed Forces in the longest war of the 20th century. More than 58,000 U.S. servicemen and women lost their lives during the struggle in Southeast Asia. But numbers alone cannot convey the impact of the war on the most world's most powerful democracy. The tension that created and the passions that unleashed threatened tear the fabric of the United States society apart. The war shattered one president's dreams of a new society, and it destroyed the career of another. The pernicious effect of the war on the United States Armed Forces would leave their reputation tarnished and sap their confidence. Damage that had taken years to repair. This effect was a direct result of the politicians in Washington who thought they could decide the outcome of the war, rather than our military strategists and our fighting forces on the ground. There is no doubt that the politicians' inability to lead fighting to the military was a direct result in the heavy losses of life in Vietnam. It is through programs like tonight that we can truly say to our returning Vietnam veterans, welcome home. evening program is United States Marine Corps Vietnam veteran Joe Castellano. Joe was raised in the Morgan section of Cerebral. He attended the Chessie Stover School and was a graduate of Cerebral War Memorial High School, class of 68. 67? 67? <laughs> Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart. <laughs> Joe had a choice of which branch of service he wanted to join. In his own words, he told me, he chose the Marines because he wanted to be trained by the best. He joined the Corps while still in high school and was placed on a delayed activation until the summer. 
He reported for basic training at Paris Island in August 68. After basic, he was sent to Camp Lejeune for weapons training, followed by motor transport training at Camp Geiger. The next step on his journey sent him to Camp Pendleton for jungle training in preparation for his next duty station, Vietnam. Following a short layover in Okinawa, he wound up in Southeast Asia. Joe spent one year, one month, and five days in Vietnam from March 25, 1968 through May 2, 1969. It is my pleasure to know you, Joe, your family, and now I'd like to introduce our honored guest speaker for this evening, Sergeant Joseph Castellano, United States Marine Corps. So 
I caught a little grip from my uh, older brother, Rocky, who's not with us any longer, because I, a few things that I do remember, I, we were under attack one night, and the mortars, rockets. I had a helmet on, but I had sand coming down my face. I was writing a letter to my his mother's day. I'll always remember, because it was mother's day. And I kind of got scared like I wasn't going to see my mother again, so I wrote some stupid stuff in that letter, and my older brother wrote back and says, hey, you can't be telling mommy that. She's getting upset. <laughs> So from there, you know, I have a few different things. I, there's a guy's name in this pamphlet here. I had breakfast with my buddy back there this morning, Gary Poland. And uh, we reminisced about this one guy I was with over there, John Burns. He's in the pamphlet. I went to the hospital to visit him. He got shot in the leg. So we're talking to him, and I'm watching him. He's sitting on his bed, and he's taking Q-tips. And he's sticking it in the bullet hole in the front, pulling it out the back. Johnny, what are you doing? He says, i got to keep this wound open. As long as I keep it open, they won't send me back out in the front. I said, man, you, you, one way or the other, you're going to go back. Yeah, we're all going to go back. Don't worry about it. So with that, I come home. The day I did come home from Vietnam, because he told me he was going to get killed, I came home, I party party with my friend, go to the Peter Pank diner, only to find out this guy's sister and a good, another good friend of mine, they just got word that he got killed. So, I guess I was the last guy to see all life. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, my family knows. I was in the seminary. Become a priest. Didn't last too long. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing that got me through that, and the one thing that got me through Nam and, and the Marine Corps, was, you know, I was only 18. I actually was only 17 when I joined. What do I know? I'm a stupid young kid, you know? But, uh, one thing that got me through it all, and I'm glad this guy showed up over here for the Stanley, because uh, I love my Lord, and he got me through it all. So, you know, I, I didn't make it home, but I got back to Okinawa. They asked for a volunteer to stay because somebody lost their parent and they needed a, plant, a, a seat on the plane. I said, you know what? He lost his mother. Let him, let him go. I'll stay back. So instead of coming home, I stayed in Oklahoma for three extra days, which would be, you know, had to be I go to confession line up <laughs> But just to, just to, I, I can look around. I know I got some Vietnam vets here with me. They're all spread around, but. We do carry some stuff in our heart that hurts forever. I want to end with this, because it's not nice. The feeling I have, killing other human beings. It's the job I had to do. So, I still hurts, but I know that I killed people. But, I guess that's just the way it had to be. But I'm thankful to be here. And uh, this great post of mine here is a good post. And the, the brothers are strong here, so I'm happy to be home, and thank you. Okay. We will now pay tribute to our terrible voice paid the ultimate sacrifice in the Vietnam War. As I read each name of the KA hero, an honor guard member will place a token of appreciation in memory of our fallen brother. Roll order. United States Marine Corps, killed in action, February 1st, 1967. Francis D. Patel.
Statistic, United States Marine Corps, killed in action November 11, 1967. John P. Byrne, United States Marine Corps, killed in action April 30th, 1969.
in any branch of the service during the period between November 1st, 1955 and May 15th, 1955. Please come forward and receive your 50th anniversary Vietnam War Veteran Commemorative Pin. The tokens will be issued by representatives of the Vietnam War 50th Anniversary Committee. They are the chair, Ken Streck, Ken Kelly, and myself. Vietnam veterans, please come forward. At this time, our Piper is going to play the Armed Forces Medley. As he plays your branch of the service, please stand and render a hand salute to the colors. Piper.
Hernandez. On behalf of the American Legion Post 211, I'd like to thank all of you for attending our annual Vietnam Veterans Remembrance Service. Special thanks to the VFW 4699, Vietnam Veterans of America, Post 62 from South Amboys, Father Michael, Father Stanley, <coughs> Tom Masterson, our backpiper, Bobby Horniak, who's been with us for probably almost 20 years, our ceremonial bugler, and Rich Kosmuski, for putting together this beautiful program in honor of our forgotten Vietnam veterans. I'd also like to call up and recognize Michelle, Michelle Roman. Michelle, can you please come up?
I'd like to also thank the uh, Father Stanley, Father Mike, for your attendance here tonight. Uh, at this time, staying in our country, we could probably use all the prayers that you can offer. Probably more than you can offer. So we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your attendance here tonight and our spiritual well-being. I'd like to thank the commander. Iron Bishop, for your enthusiastic support of putting on these programs. Okay, at this time, I'd like to call on Father Michael for the benediction. Okay. Lord God of hosts, be with us. Lest we forget the noble and heroic efforts of the past in times of war and peace to pres preserve freedom and liberty, to guard democracy, maintain order, sustain humanity in ways of understanding, respect, and justice. We honor the men who have with great courage sacrificed themselves in Vietnam and on the battlefields of life. They have shown great compassion and concern for all for all of us. May our memorial to those fallen be a living one of continued effort in the cause of freedom. May go with us and enable us with your help to maintain in word and deed the principles to which we have pledged ourselves. And we honor all the Vietnam veterans of America who have given their lives for our freedom. And the good Lord grant them eternal rest and perpetual light shine upon them forever. Amen. 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 Please be seated. I was handed a note from my good buddy Ed Martin that you mentioned this. And I'd be remiss if I did it because we spent how many years together in school, Eddie, in Baker Heart Grammar School, getting our knuckles busted. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And that's never broke our leg either. <laughs> they tried. I mean, that's, isn't that why we have our brightest in the hands today? <laughs> <laughs> Sister Mary Mildred. No, they have. Right? Sally? She's up there right now. I got a question. Stand here and tell me you never earned one of them. <laughs> well, when she wasn't looking. <laughs> All right, uh, Major Amy Duck uh, Updike, active duty army, stationed on the West Coast. Her mother, Robin, is a Vietnam era medic. Shipping out tomorrow? Is that what you said? Uh, I, I'm actually a 20 hour layover <laughs> from oh, the training. Okay. okay, good luck, stay safe. Okay. Michelle Roman, once again, for God Bless America.
I see friends and supporters of the American Legion of Industry Post to Alaska. I see family and friends of our veterans. But what I really see is the faces of young men. Let's turn back the hands of time. Let's go back 50, 55 years ago. I see so many friends who I've met, gone to school with, some for 12 years. Men like Eddie Marzak, Mike Fisher. How about the Cerebral War Memorial High School classes of the mid-60s, where most of our Vietnam veterans came from? Just my class, 64, Dennis Dragonski, Paulie Cabarro, Butchie Grayinski, Lenny Kaczynski, Mike Fisher, Walt Tuaros, myself. That's the ones I can just see out there that I know. How about all the others? Other graduates during that period. Charlie Adolph. Uh, Georgie Dusko, Joey Myers, Joey Castellano, Ken Kelly, so many, many more of you. And I'm humbled to stand here before you and call you a friend and a fellow veteran. Yes, we were young ones. When called to duty, we served our country with pride and to the best of our ability. What we have seen through our eyes and have accomplished with our bodies during our time in service can only be imagined by those who never served. It doesn't matter which branch of the service you were in, whether you're in country or in a support facility. You all gave some. Some gave all. Tonight we can look back at those years and we can stand a little taller, our backs a little straighter, and with a lot more pride in ourselves. Because we know inside that we accomplished our mission. I'm proud to stand before you this evening. And it is a privilege and an honor for us to be called brothers, which is something only we can understand. Our country, country thanks you for your service. Piper, let's go home.